Okay, hey guys and girls, I'm going to do a little tutorial video here on how you can fix uh, your slow winding windows. For instance, the window on this side is one I refixed yesterday, and uh, it's one touch which is nice on this. Nice and quick, I've still got the rubber that's uh, it's sucking the rubber in a bit, which is... It needs reflocking on the inside, it will stop, stop it from doing that again. But uh, it's as fast going up as it is fast going down now, which is quite nice. So, uh, yeah, that works quite well. Uh, but if we move to the other side, it's a little slower. It's not as bad today, because today's a bit warmer. So obviously if there's any grease in there, it's actually a bit more warm. But uh, I shake going down. You can hear it's very gritty inside, slidey and, you know, not very slidey. And back up. Mm, there's also a bit of a cracking sound there as well. Doesn't sound good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the um, door off, which I've actually took already off. I forgot to uh, do the video. Um, or oh, I got to that's the middle screw, and uh, yeah, I realised oh I need to do a video on this. But the door is nice and simple to take off. Uh, first thing you need to do is take your vent, your, uh, your speaker grill off, which is down there. Some duct tape as well, because in the other side, the membrane inside, which protects it from you know drafts and things, that was all broke. So I've just covered it up with duct tape. It's not the best thing to use in the world, but it, it works. Uh, yes, and screws you require. You need a, you need a T20 and a T27 because your three main supporting on the door handle is a T27 there's one here just underneath here there's one just underneath here somewhere there and there's one on the end here they're T27s you've got three of the T20 screws that is that one there that one is a T20 and you've got two underneath here which is a T20 and a T20. You don't have to remove the speaker if you don't want to, however they are also T20s. Um, you do need to remove, if you don't have electric windows, uh, you will have to remove the little um, bit that sticks out. You just literally pull the plastic part offwards and it will pull off. Uh, the door pin you have to remove this as well. This is nice and simple. It just unscrews. Nice and easy. Put that down there with the other bits. Um, what else do you need to remove? That is it. Right, let me just undo these screws and I will get back to you. Okay. Now if your door handle hasn't fallen off because you've got those screws left in there, it should just pull off. Like that, nice and easy. I'll put that down there, out of the way. I am sitting on the rubber car mat um, because it's a new generic one and it's clean. Uh, now, to actually get, get the door off, it's a very simple process. You start from the bottom, you can get your fingers normally underneath it, and you just tease it open. Sometimes it can take a bit of teasing to do it. <laughs> this might be a two-handed job. You should really use like a... There you go, it's going. A trim tool to undo this, if you've got one. Which just looks like a big flat fork. with uh, Only with two prongs. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to have to use both hands for this. Uh, so yeah, basically all you do is you undo this. Uh, and my suspension is auto-leveling because I've just got out of the car. <laughs> Um, you can hear it hissing. <laughs> um, yeah, you undo these ones here. You've got two in here, I do believe. You've got one about here somewhere. Uh, you've got one here, and you think you've got a couple behind the speaker as well, and a couple, um, one going up that side. Uh, and once you've got this whole panel open. You can then literally jiggle it around and it should just lift upwards and then off. We're going to try that in a second. Right, now as we can see, someone has been in here before. 
Now, I'm not going to lie, I just did some of these. That was already there, some of this was already here. I made this one a little bit bigger, and this one wasn't here at all. I had to get to do this to get into the window runner. Now, you want your window about that height, um, because that gives you access to that runner there, which I've just put some nice grease in. And there's a runner just there that it runs in somewhere where is it just here and that needs grease in it as well um the edge of my finger just here there is a runner um it's held on with that bolt there um and just get grease on the end of your finger and just just rub it all inside that runner uh once you've done that wind, wind your wind up and down a few times it should make a massive difference. I'm just going to do it to this one in here. I'm going to wind the window up and down a couple of times and we'll see what difference it's made. Probably none, knowing my look, but we'll see. Um, then another trick we're going to do is we're going to get some silicon spray and we're going to spray it in here. And then if we're going to try and get it in here as well, down at this bottom part, uh, and see if we can... Uh, get that moving a little more free. The old tricks I did with the other the other window on the other side and it's worked brilliantly so we'll see if it works this way. Okay right also while you're in here just give that little gear that's in here a bit of grease as well because again that was bone dry on this. Uh, let's see how this thing moves up and down now. So it's in the up position at the moment let's see how it comes down. Don't know if that was faster. Let's try up. I know it struggles a little bit in up because I have just ran it a few times up and down. Let's try. Better than it was, I think. The more you wind up and down, the better it's going to get because the more of the grease gets coated in the uh, in the runners. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's cool. That's cool. Uh, let's take it down again, and we'll do we'll do the magic silicon spray. Let me go and grab that. I have been washing my car as well, all the bits of plastic trim and things, hence the mucky water. Now this stuff, this is Halfords, which is a car brand. You know, sorry, it's a it's a a car place in the United Kingdom, like a shop that sells parts for cars and for, you know, general car DIY stuff. A bit overpriced, but I've got my uh, my brother that works there, so he gets this stuff at a uh, colleague discount, which is nice. And this stuff, just just spray it. Just make sure I'm getting this right on the thing. Just want to spray it in here. What like is? Now I like to spray it so it starts to run down inside it. Oh, I bet that came out funny on the camera. Like now the best thing about silicon spray is with it not being oil based, it doesn't damage rubber seals. Um, however you do have the issue where it does rub off in time. It washes out. It'll take a while but it does do it. Like I say, you can see it running down inside the door, maybe, I don't know if you can. But, uh, again, of course, it, as the window goes up and down a few times, it will take this silicon spray and it will, um, it will coat it on the inside of the gear, uh, you know, of the glass, so to speak. Uh, don't worry about it not being hard, you know, hard to get off. It doesn't damage paint or anything. It's good stuff. It's uh, actually use it in food to uh, lubricate machinery like conveyor belts on production lines and things. It can't be bad. Let's see what difference this has made now, shall we? It may take a few um, wind up and downs to make it seem different, but we'll see. Wow! Look at that. That's almost like it was probably when it was brand new. I 
Now on the other side, on the other door, it's easy to get access to. Um, but I actually sprayed some silicon spray in the runners inside here, which well, we could try on this one. I don't think I'll be able to do it on the other side, but we could try getting it in here. I don't know if I'm hitting the runner or not, but at least I'll be waterproofing my door somewhat. Well, I won't be because it does wash off, which is a shame, but you know what I mean. Alright, there's a bit of a runner in there, see if I can get that one. Don't mind about using a lot of this stuff, like I say, we rather can get it from work. Alright, let's see what it's like now. It's amazing what a bit of lubrication can do, isn't it, eh? And there you have it. So that's just something that, uh, you know, you could have a go at doing. Uh, actually, I wouldn't mind figuring out why my central locking on this side only works when I pull the pin upwards, not when I lock the door on this side. If I make out I've locked my door... Oh, it's working now! Well, maybe me spraying some silicon spray in there has fixed that as well. Because that didn't used to work. It only worked when I pulled the pin upwards. Well, there you have it. That's good. So, I fixed two things. Yay! And now all I've got to do is all these horrible cuts, where they've all been cut open and things, just put some tape over it. You know, just so we don't get any drafts or anything come through. So, nice and simple. Some nice uh, gaffer tape, duct tape, whatever you want to call it. And uh, tape that sucker up. Should do, should do good. Another thing you could do as well while you're in here, I've done this for the other side, is these things here, you can see I've got one that snapped off here. Uh, you can't get them out, they are so stuck, that they're in so good. Uh, if you've got a cloth or something, you can wrap a cloth around it and then pull it while wiggling it at the same time. Alternatively, a pair of pliers will do the job, but that one does need replacing. Funny enough, the same one on the other side is the same, where it snapped off. Uh, I've got one here that looks like it's snapped off. It looks like someone's been in here before, because they have pulled this door card off quite bad. Um, and there's supposed to be one here as well, which that one looks pretty horrific as well. It's all snapped. And... Um, and broken, which I assume goes into one of these holes. Um, but yeah, uh, spider's webs a lot in here. It's been there for a while. It's funny, isn't it? Whenever you cord, the wind kicks up a lot. I don't know where I put the cloth actually. Where did I put the cloth? Is it here? Yes. I like to keep everything nice and clean. So we'll just clean that up a bit before I. Put the sticky tape on. Right, there we go. Let's tape that door up and make it look although I've not been in here. Well, obviously it will be, but make it so that it's got the uh, the membrane back again. Okay, that's that all done. Right, now to get the door card on. Don't forget to plug your uh, cables in as well. I did that um, when I was messing on the other side, when I was messing with the central locking. And I forgot to plug a, a cable in here, which goes to your um, your door pin switch, uh, which tells a little thing on your dashboard over there that your doors are open, just above my finger. And it uh, it lives inside here, so yeah. I forgot to plug that in, so I had to take that door card off again and do it all. Ah, nightmare. Anyway. Okay, and there you go. <laughs> it pretty much looks like I've never been there. Just put that panel back on there. Again, it's very difficult to do one-handed. Lovely how it all clicks on nice and neat. And there we have it. Right. Let's close the door. And let's have a look. 
Can you imagine how quick these things are gulping down? Much better. That's a lot better, isn't it, eh? Yeah, I can live with that easy. Now this side obviously is very good. Yeah, that one works brilliantly, that one. One thing I'm going to do though, because these rubber things, they do stretch over time. I really wish I could fix that. What I need to do is I need to find another door card and take that off it. Maybe maybe the rear one would fit, I don't know. Um, or take that off and get it reflocked. A little bug there or something. Uh, you can see the flock does come off it. Look, this is the um, the flock. Uh, which is stop, which is supposed to stop it from sticking, but it's... Uh, yeah, it's not working properly. Uh, one thing I am going to do... Let me just get out. Have a walk around the back of the hole. Uh, looking pretty good. There's some oil on the floor, but most of that's from my other car. Although that oil there is not from my other car. Uh, that's from this car. Which tells me I must have a leak on the leak offs going from front to back or back to front. Uh, well, there's no drips there, so it can't be leaking much maybe it's doing it overnight uh, and that's this thing something that always annoys me on the uh, cars is the gap um, now thankfully we've got a nice plastic uh, thing on this which you can just drag it through and you if you if you're good with two hands you can grab it and pull it let me just try that right now see if that, see if that works the screen's gonna go black for a second or two but yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. No gap anymore. And okay, it does shrunk over time, but because we've got such a nice uh, bit of plastic here which covers it, it covers the uh, the gap up. So now it looks like it's not got one. Shame we can't do that for the rear windows. You can see how much it's moved. That used to be up to here, and then up to there. Yeah, it's done. Anyway guys and girls, that should do, and I'll catch you on the next video. Hope this has helped you out. Peace out.